Hey, good morning. It is it's Wednesday, June the 2nd, 2021. Welcome to the Watch, a daily time in God's Word where we take one chapter at a time and we pray, we break it down with, with one another, we, we, um, we study God's Word together. So, excited about today's, today's chapter. There's my mom. As you come in, let us know you're here. That way we know kind of who's in the room. Um, that's a, a blessing to to me and to each other to know who's in the room and who's who's participating. There's Kim, there's Peggy, there's my sister. All right, let's have a word of prayer and then we'll we will jump in and get started. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for a new day. Lord, we're not really sure what today will hold, but we're thankful that you are that you tell us that you'll be with us every step. You never promised us a life without problems, but you promised us your presence and your 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 sovereign hand at work in our lives. Lord, thank you. Lord, wake up our minds this morning to the reading of your word. Let it change us. Let it change who we are. And make us more like your son Jesus. Oh, we love you. We ask all this in the name of Christ. Amen. All right, there's Robin and Wilma. So in Luke 5, there are four four stories that take place in Luke chapter 5. There's two, um, two stories of Jesus calling two of his disciples. And there's also two amazing healing events, uh, miraculous healings that Jesus did. And Sam was right in the middle of that is another story or another reminder that Jesus from time to time on a regular basis pulled himself out of the crowds out of the busyness of his life and spent time with his Heavenly Father and so what an encouragement to us this morning let's read it says one day as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee great crowds pressed in on him to listen to the Word of God he noticed two empty boats at the water's edge where the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, which is Peter, its owner, to push it out into the water. So he sat into the boat and taught the crowds from there. So the crowds were so big and they were pressing against him down against the shoreline that he asked Peter, can I have one of your boats? Can I borrow one of your boats? So he, he got in the boat and pushed away from the shore, and preached from there, taught from there. When he finished speaking, he said to Simon, Now go out where it is deeper, and let down your nets to catch some fish. <clears throat> Master, Simon replied, We worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I'll let the nets down again. And this time, their nets were so full of fish, they began to tear. A shout for help brought their partners in the other boat, and soon both boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. So Jesus doesn't just take care of our spiritual needs. He takes care of our everyday needs as well. These guys had fished all night and hadn't caught anything. This was their livelihood. And so Jesus provided the harvest. When Simon Peter realized what had happened, he fell on his knees before Jesus and said, Oh Lord, please leave me. I'm such a sinful man. For he was awestruck by the number of fish they caught, as were the others with him. His partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were also amazed. Jesus replied to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will be fishing for people. And as soon as they landed, they left everything and followed Jesus. Notice, there were no discussions, no debates. They had an encounter with the Lord. And so their only response was to drop everything they had, their lives, their livelihoods, to follow this man that they were already in tune with and already aligning their lives with. And that's what we all are called to be, as fishers of people, going out into the highways and the byways, living a life that shows that we have committed our lives to Christ. A different kind of life. The Bible calls it that we are to live peculiar lives. Lives that are different. 
In one of the villages, Jesus met a man with an advanced case of leprosy. When the man saw Jesus, he bowed with his face to the ground, begging him to be healed. Lord, he said, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. <clears throat> Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said. Be healed. And instantly the leprosy disappeared. Then Jesus instructed him not to tell anyone what had happened. He said, go to the priest until let him examine you. Take along your offering required in the law of Moses for those who have been healed of leprosy. This will be a public testimony that you have been cleansed. Lepers were considered to be completely untouchable. People that the world had completely pushed to the side. They weren't allowed to be around other people. They were, they were banished from society. Jesus is not afraid to be with him because he knows what the outcome will be. But despite Jesus' instructions, the report of his power spread even faster. Vast crowds came to hear him preach and be healed of their diseases. But Jesus often withdrew to the wilderness for prayer. You see, Jesus pulling alone, pulling away. You know, the morning watch for me has been a time where I know that at least once a day that I will get to pull away from the hecticness of life and the business of life and my schedule and my meetings and everything else and just spend time with God. Spend time with Him in prayer. Doing this with you. Jesus sets the example here. If the Son of God needed time to be alone with God, why should we not? Right? One day, while Jesus was teaching, some Pharisees and teachers of religious law were sitting nearby. It seemed that these men showed up from every village in all of Galilee and Judea, as well as from Jerusalem. And the Lord's healing power was strong with Jesus. Some men, carrying a paralyzed man on a sleeping mat, they tried to take him inside to Jesus, but they couldn't reach him because of the crowd. So they went up to the roof and took off some tiles, and they lowered the sick man on his mat down into the crowd right in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the man, Young man, your sins are forgiven. What an amazing story of friendship and dedication to their friend. That it, they knew that if they could get, this, get their friend to Jesus, he would be healed. But it was difficult. There were challenges. There was crowds. And they couldn't do it. So they went on the roof of the house and took off some of the roofing and they lowered this man down, lowered their friend down. And the cool thing about it is Jesus understands and, that, and is fully aware that our physical needs are important, but our spiritual needs are profoundly more important. And so he does heal the man, but the first thing he, Jesus says to him is, young man, your sins are forgiven. Jesus is not saying the reason why he's paralyzed is because he has sinned. No, he understands that is the first priority. That is the number one thing that this man needs is forgiveness. But the Pharisees and teachers of religious law said to themselves, who does he think he is? That's blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. That's right. They were right. Jesus was God. Jesus is God. He does have the authority. It isn't blasphemy. They were misdirected. How many people do you and I both know? How many of that? How many of us, that is our story? Or we just didn't really understand who Jesus was. That's what we see here. We see a misunderstanding, a profound misunderstanding, where Jesus is a completely different view of, he's a completely different um, reality of what they thought the Messiah would be. Jesus knew what they were thinking, so he asked them. So Jesus knows our thoughts. So Jesus knew what they were thinking, and he answers them by saying, Why do you question this in your hearts? Is it easier to say your sins are forgiven or stand up and walk? So I will prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, Stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. He might have been carried there with his friends, but he walked out of there carrying his own mat, walking with his friends. An amazing story. And Jesus here, it's very important in verse 24 to look to see what Jesus calls himself. He calls himself the Son of Man. That is a phrase that we see in Scripture, a lot in the Old Testament, specifically in the book of Daniel, where Daniel teaches about the Messiah. And one of the terms that they use to describe the Messiah is the Son of Man. 
Jesus is calling himself the Messiah. And the Messiah is the Son of God, the only begotten Son of God. And immediately as everyone watched, the man jumped up, picked up his mat, and went home praising God. Everyone was gripped with great wonder and awe. And they praised God, exclaiming, We have seen amazing things today. <clears throat> Here's what we know. When we are with Jesus, when we spend time with him, Amazing things happen in our own lives, in the lives of our families, in the lives of our churches, in the lives of our state and nation. Okay, now, so he's called Peter already, okay, who would be a major player among this group. Not a perfect guy, far from perfect. Peter ran his mouth all the time. He's healed a couple of folks. Now he is going to call Matthew or Levi. Later, as Jesus left the town, he saw a tax collector named Levi sitting in his tax collector's booth. Now, there were there was no class of people within their society that was thought worse of than a tax collector. Because the tax collectors were corrupt. They were skimming. They were traitors in the minds of the Jewish people because they were working for the Romans. They profited greatly personally. A tax collector was viewed as one of the worst of sinners. Here's what Jesus does. Follow me and be my disciple. He looks at Matthew and says, come. Come be with me. You know, if you know Jesus this morning, and you've given your heart and your life to him, you have been called. The same, the reason why you are a Christian is that God pursued you. Salvation begins with the Lord. And so he says, follow him. Look at verse 28. So Levi got up, left everything, and followed him. Similar to what we see with Peter. Matthew doesn't say, well, Lord, I'll follow you, but do I have to do this or that or the other? No. Matthew says, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving everything. Giving up his own life. Moving from darkness to light. Moving from death to life. He just says, I'll follow you. Later, Levi held a banquet in his home with Jesus as the guest of honor. Now, what kind of friends did Matthew have? People that the world did not want to be around. This is a whole room full of discarded, pushed to the side outcasts. You know, before you and I met Jesus, we were in the same crowd. Trying to live life on our own, do our own thing, pursuing our own, our own pursuits. It says, many of Levi's fellow tax collectors and other guests also ate with them. But the Pharisees and their teachers of religious law complained bitterly to Jesus' disciples. Why do you eat and drink with such scum? Jesus answered them, healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. What a wonderful verse. And it's the truth. People who need Jesus, everybody needs Jesus. But Jesus is saying here, hey, listen, I want to be with the people who need me. He says, I've come to call those who think they are righteous. I've, I've come to call not those who think they're righteous, but those who know they're sinners and need to repent. The Bible is completely full of stories where Jesus called people that the world would have given up on. Ordinary people. Ordinary, flawed, broken people. That gives me great hope because I know me. I know me. I get impatient and frustrated and angry and down on myself. I'm not sure if that's you or not, but it's me. I don't feel like I'm good enough sometimes. I don't feel like God could ever use me. These stories give me hope because I see how God uses people that the world has said that they're no good. I know who I am in Christ. That's what matters. Who you are in Christ. That is the real you. Not what the world says. Not what the enemy wants to remind you of your past. That's who you are. You're you, who you are in Christ. One day some people said to Jesus, John the Baptist's disciples fast and pray regularly and so do the disciples of the Pharisees. Why are your disciples always eating and drinking? Jesus responded, 
Do wedding guests fast while celebrating with the with the groom? Of course not. But someday the groom will be taken away from them and they will fast. Jesus here is the first record in, in Luke of Jesus talking about the day when he will no longer be with them. Talking about his, his crucifixion. <clears throat> then Jesus gave them this illustration. No one tears a piece of cloth from a new garment and uses it to patch an old garment. For then the new garment will be ruined, and the new patch wouldn't even match the old garment. And no one who puts new wineskins in the old wineskins, for the new wine will burst the wineskins, spilling the wine and ruining the skins. New wine must be stored in new wineskins. For no one who drinks the old wine seems to want the new wine. The old is just fine, they say. Again, Jesus is teaching about a parable here. And so uh, we're past time. Apologize for going over time a little bit today. There's Kim and Connie and Rosemary and Patty and David Earl and Lisa and Robin. I love you all. Hope this has encouraged you today. It's encouraged me. Just think about these things today as you go through your day. Tomorrow we're in Luke 6. I love you all. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for your truth. Bless every single person who's here, those who might watch later, those who might stumble across this on YouTube. Lord, I just pray that you would do a work in each of our hearts. Make us more like your son, Jesus. Use your word to do that. Lord, we love you. And we ask all this in the name of Christ. Amen. All right. I love you all. Have a great day. And we'll see you tomorrow.